Okay, so we've got a big uh, 420D, which is doing a lot of banging. Dun 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 terminated. Dun 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 dun. Anyway, what in the earth has is going on here? There seems to be a load of crap welding down there. There seems to be some crap welding here. A big bat of steel bar. Let's see how good his weld does. Uh, spent the metal, so the weld's actually all right. But Jesus, what on earth has happened here? What has he been doing? <laughs> Jesus, man. Jesus, Jesus. So, right, I think we'll just need to change the DPF now. He's left us no choice. So we're going to need to change his DPF because he's bastardised that. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumb, hit the subscribe. Have yourselves a great old day. Peace. Welcome back. We are on 420D bummer. And this is its replacement DPF. What's happened to the one on it is this flange here is sheared off completely. So it's cracked right around here and broken off. Right. And I'm going to ask you why you think that's happened. So this is the flexi that somebody welded into it. Any idea why it might have broken up at the flange? Obviously this is a flexible part here and it looks like somebody's welded, well they have welded, it's just sheared off of there, uh, a big steel bar. So questions below, why do you think it broke up there? So why would it break the flange off? Questions, answers below. Thanks for watching, hit the thumb, hit subscribe, have yourself a great day. So like I said we've got the 420D uh, battery's too low for flash, so I'm sure there's a torch down there. I'll show you what's happened, and, uh, whether it's because of that big bit of angle iron that's been welded in there. But you can see just there, that's split there. So that DPF is completely knackered, so you can't do nothing with that, eh? So that is absolutely destroyed. So hopefully this, if we take the clamp off, the bit underneath there is okay. If not, it's going to need a turbo and a manifold, so not good. Right, so I think the turbo flange is okay, but the flange for the DPF obviously is not. <laughs> so hopefully the turbo will be able to save. Looks like we will, but I'll need to inspect it further when we get that out. Right guys, so you've seen me manage to get that disconnected up the top, right? Um, and we're going to explain what's happened here. So you can see the guy's welded in a new flexi. He's did that, right? I'm not sure what he's welded on. if he's just welded onto this, which isn't what you should weld onto either. Um, but then, in his infinite wisdom, he's decided to put this metal bar in. I don't know why he's did that, right? This metal bar here is most probably why that's broken up there, right? So this part here is flexible for a reason. So when you start the car up, this will all move. The engine will rock, right? So you will be able to no, sit a thirty bit on it. They say you know it's not shaking itself to death, but that is usually when it shakes the most when it starts starts to carve up. But then the car's running, you know you're accelerating, the engine will move slightly when you're changing gear, accelerating. Everything's on bushes, diffs on bushes, exhausts on but what the earth, man? <laughs> what in the hell? Um. I'm not usually lost for the words. This guy loves his angle iron, man. He's an engineer. He's put two bits of metal welded them onto a nut. And a rubber there and a bolt. Two bolts welded together. Oh, he's an engineer, man. He's an engineer, this guy. So, but anyway, we'll go back onto exhaust. So your car, obviously, engine moves as you're accelerating. Bloody bloody blah. So, what happens then if we weld in a flexi part and then we weld a steel bar to there to there? We've then did away with the flexibility. So what's going to happen? Something's going to give, and in this instance what's happened is, is it's broken that there. So it's broken that. So the guy that welded that in there, 100% has cost this guy uh, that DPF. So, and now we've got the issue as well. This DPF there has a sensor cut, so we now need to swap this sensor. These don't look too clever at all. Uh, they don't feel very good either. I actually think that's burst there. So that's the sample tubes for the, the, the DPF, so we'll need to swap them over as well. Which I think they're coming off no bother, so. But then what can happen is we can fit all of this and then find we've got issues with these sensors as well. So then there's one 
two, three, four. Yeah, I don't know. I think these are just all two sensors, to be honest with you. Say it was an aux gas sensor for BMW, six hundred pounds. Up, oh, could be more, six hundred pounds. Some of the aux gas sensors, uh, some Mercedes ones, nine hundred pounds uh, for the aux gas sensors. Like I said, but thankfully these just look like O2 sensors. I'm not sure why there's two in this uh, diesel, but so obviously the flexes went on it. You can see this is where this is welded up there. Right, that flex that they've put on it is it's like they've welded right onto the actual the the protective coating. What in hell? So I've no idea. So that's for the bin now. That's scrap. You couldn't fix that now. You couldn't fix that. This you could fix, and I'll put a little picture. of how, I'm not slating anybody, but I'm going to put how I do it right, and you don't do that because then doing all that, putting the flexi bit in, what you're doing as well as doing is put a straight pipe in there. You know, without any flexibility in it, it needs the flexibility to be able to move, otherwise things break, and clearly that's what's happened. So, you're going to see when we get this, this off. Thanks for watching. Hit the big thumb, hit the subscribe, have yourself. Go and hit that thumbs up, hit subscribe, go on, you know you want to. So, it goes on, man. Obviously, we've seen all the sketchy, right? And I thought something would happen down here. I thought that looks a bit sketchy, that, right? So, and something's been cut there. There was a bit falling out. Alright, so that's obviously been cut through there, somehow or another, that's obviously been in there somehow, right, and then bolted up to the engine. So this part here can be bolted solid to the engine, because this part can flex, right, now look at the actual state of that, that's just a big hole in there. <laughs> what in there, that's, you can't weld that bit of the flex, eh? That's not the welding bit. It's bits like this. You can't weld on that, man. That's wire. What in the f... Ah, so obviously you see it's built in the flange. Um, so I'll need to see... How we bolt all this back on. I've not taken a bolt out of there. I've not taken... A bolt out of there, and there you go, you can see where they've chopped that one, so I'll need to take that bracket off and see if we can at least get one on there, and then I'll maybe need to get a exploded diagram to see how that went and what goes where, and I'll need to see if I can find a bolt, and it'll have to be the right kind of bolt, can't it be too long, can't it be too short, has to be perfect, otherwise you're screwing in through the engine. I don't fancy paying for that engine, so we'll need to make sure it's right. Um, I can't believe that's been left like that, man. That's how that's been put together. I'm really, really, really disappointed in whoever did that. <laughs> and then he's got his engineering skills here as well. I'm going to suggest it's the same guy. I'm going to suggest he likes a bit of flat iron. He's maybe an ironmonger. Or a blacksmith. <laughs> he's certainly not a welder anyway, that's for sure. He's certainly not experienced in metal. Anyway. We will uh, need to revisit this one. Obviously, we know we've got that DPF there, and we know we need to swap that sensor. I've already soaked that one, so we'll soak this one and leave it. Um, now, we will need to have a chat with the customer. I've removed it, because we, we don't know what we need until we remove that. And clearly now, what had happened was the customer had seen us on Click Mechanic as well, and I had tried to explain on the phone that Click Mechanic times are going on the basis of brand new DPF, all that kind of stuff. Now now that the guy's turned up, we can see that it is a second hand DPF and even the customer himself is probably unaware of how bad that is. You know, he didn't fix the car, that's why the car's here for us to fix. So he's trusted whoever did that and that's what they've gave him. <laughs> so uh, we will try and do a much better job for the gentleman um, and make sure it's going to at least last because wh whoever did that to that, they've cost the guy the DPF if they, if they hadn't have welded that straight bar on it it probably wouldn't have broke the flange I've not heard of these DPFs breaking flanges off but you know, but if you make a, a flexible exhaust rigid then that's what happens, something's got to give and on this occasion it's been that clamp so it's a very, very late Friday afternoon. I was very ill during the start of the week. Uh, same with my youngins, two of them. Uh, we're really ill. Now my wife's really ill, so... <laughs> so it's going around the whole house, so... We've got a lot of catching up to do. Um, but we managed to just squeeze this one in today. Um, 
and I might have another one after this, but we're just going to go to manage it. So, what can only do? I'm only human, after all, don't put the blame on me. Anyway, have yourselves a great old Friday. Push that thumbs up, subscribe button down there, hit the thumb as well. Go on, you know you want it, man. It's, it's Friday, Friday. Come on, push the button, hit the subscribe. Have yourselves a great weekend. Hey guys, welcome back. You see we have the 420D DPF, which that one, the Flex, is still intact, thankfully. This guy here, God knows what he was up to there, man, eh? But he's really, really cost this guy a few quid. So obviously what he's done there is he's uh, attacked that bolt with something, I have no idea what, but he's cut that bolt, right, and he's not put it back. Uh, there's another one missing at it somewhere as well, so then there's a bracket that's broken off it as well. So, and I reckon it's all been because of that bit of angle iron that he's, he's welded in and not put the DPF brackets back on. So that obviously... Must have been onto there somehow, you know, somehow or another, it must have been onto here or somewhere uh, for that to be attached up to the block. But we'll swap this onto the other one and I'll take that bracket off of here. If we can get a bit of flash on it, I'll take this bracket off of here and see if we can get that stud out of there and see if we can put a new one on it. I can't do nothing about all the oil leak and all that. Um, and we will need to inspect this vehicle further. Uh, we may need to. Uh, regen this thing so we may need to put it, I run up the motorway um, tell it it's got a new DPF and all that on it so hopefully it's okay but obviously that's an unknown part that we're fitting it second hand as well so we've absolutely no idea what it's going to be like when we put it on so we're just going to need to try it and see what happens so there you go guys, if you haven't already hit a big thumb on the Monday, hit a subscribe on the Monday have yourselves a great old Monday okay